Hello friends. Now in this lecture we are going to cover our topic physical significance of moment of inertia. Now imagine that we are having a body of mass small m. Always keep in mind mass is the what contain of matter. More is the matter, more is the mass. More is the mass, more is the inertia. Therefore, always keep in mind, inertia is the measure of mass. More is the mass, more is the inertia. Now, if I want to displace this body with certain acceleration a, then I have to apply certain force f. Then the body will be displaced from its position. So here we are having force is equal to mass into acceleration. But if I want to rotate this body about its axis of rotation, I have to apply force f. So that here the body will be accelerated through certain angular acceleration, let us say alpha. Then here tau is equal to i alpha. This is what our general equation. If we compare both equations for linear motion, force is equal to mass into acceleration. This one linear acceleration. But here for rotational motion, we need to apply angular acceleration alpha. Therefore, here force and torque are analogous to each other. Mass and here moment of inertia are analogous to each other. And linear acceleration and angular acceleration are analogous to each other. So here force is equal to mass into acceleration which is same in rotational motion as that of tau is equal to i alpha. This is what your physical significance of moment of inertia. So now let us go for next slide. Here dependence of moment of inertia on the size, shape and distribution of mass of the body. On which factors your moment of inertia is completely dependent? It depends on size, shape and distribution of the mass. Here, let us take an example of a flywheel. Imagine that we are having a flywheel or ring or disc. Now, here, imagine that we are having a ring. Let us consider the ring. Here, it will have certain mass at its circumference. So, it will revolve about its axis of rotation. Now, if we are taking a grinding wheel, which is used to give finishing to the object, the grinder. Here, the grinder wheel will have again one more axis of rotation and it will revolve in this way. So, according to the shape of the body, its moment of inertia also changes. Here, for ring, moment of inertia will be different. Here, for this, moment of inertia will be different. So, in this way, more is the radius. More is the radius of direction, more will be moment of inertia. Now next is radius of direction. So imagine that we are having a ring. What do we mean by radius of direction? So it can be understood with the help of example. Imagine friends that we are having an axis of rotation z z dash and a ring on which we are going to consider any point, let us say small m, where the whole mass of a body is supposed to be concentrated. Then your radius of variation is what? Actually it is a distance. Always keep in mind, radius of variation is what? It is a distance. Distance between what? Your axis of rotation and the point at which whole mass of a body is supposed to be concentrated, which is denoted by k. So in this way, your radius of variation as it is a distance, it is measured in meter. It is measured in meter. So what is your general formula? I is equal to mr square. Moment of inertia is equal to mass of the body multiplied by square of the distance. But here instead of r, I am going to replace it by radius of variation that is k. So my formula becomes i is equal to mk square. k is what your radius of variation. So same formula can be written as for radius of variation k square is equal to i upon m. Taking under root of both sides, therefore your k is equal to under root of i upon m. This is what your general formula for radius of variation. Now dimensionally, you can uh, write your k, its, it's unit is meter, therefore its dimension will be L1 only, M0 and T0. Now in this way, we have studied, we have understood the concept of radius of variation. So now let us go ahead for next term. Before going to that, 
Uh, let us understand the importance of radius of variation and also the physical significance of radius of variation. So, the radius of variation is the measure of distribution of mass. Next, if the particle of the body are distributed close to the radius of variation is less, and if the particle is distributed away from the axis of rotation, its radius of variation is more. We can easily understood with the help of example. Now imagine that here I am having a circular body and this is my axis of rotation. Right? My general formula is i is equal to mk square. So mass is a fundamental property that will remain constant, only k will vary. So imagine that my particle, where the whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated at position m1, which is located at distance k1. This is what k1 is radius of variation distance between the axis of rotation and the point at which whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated. Now, here, as my m1 is close to axis of rotation, its k1 will be less, that is, radius of variation will be less. Now, I am going to consider my mass m1 of this body at over here, or we can say, let us say m2, then its radius of variation will be the distance between axis of rotation and the point at which whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated, let us say it is k2. Now, here you will observe that your k2 is greater than k1, means what? Here, at the position of your m1 and m2, as it changes, your k1 and k2 also changes. If your mass is away from axis of rotation, k is large. If mass is close to the axis of rotation, k1 is small. Now, on which factors your radius of variation, that is k, depends? It depends on distribution of mass, position, of axis of rotation and shape and size of the body. Now imagine that I am having a triangle. If its axis of rotation is over here, then it will revolve in this way. If its axis of rotation is over here, then it will revolve in this way, about this axis. If its axis of rotation is over here, it will revolve in a different manner. So here, position and shape and size of the body also matters. Now let us go ahead for the next term that is what torque. What do we mean by torque? It is generally force multiplied by perpendicular distance. So we can write like tau is equal to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. How to memorize this formula? Tau tougher toughest. So this word tougher. Now force is measured in newton. Your distance is measured in meter. Always keep in mind torque is having one more unit that is joule. Okay. Now here this is possible in case of Linear motion, but what about rotational motion? The tau is equal to i alpha, where i is what? Moment of inertia, and alpha is what? Angular acceleration. So let us uh, go ahead for proof of tau is equal to i alpha. Now imagine, friends, that I am having a body of random shape of any arbitrary shape. I am going to consider the axis of rotation let us say z dash. Now the body is revolving in anti-clockwise direction along with the angular acceleration alpha. Now I am going to consider the different masses located at different positions like m1, m2, m3 and delta dash of 2 mn located at distance let us say r1, r2, r3 and rn. Now these particles are revolving in the same angular acceleration alpha. So here what is my general formula for torque? Tau is equal to fr, right? But force is equal to what? Mass into acceleration, right? Now here r. So what is the general formula? I can write generally r as r, but a is equal to r alpha. Already we have studied this formula in our circular motion. Put in the above equation. So tau is equal to m r alpha into r, r into r becomes r square, so m r square alpha, this is what I am general formula for torque. Now let us imagine that for particle m1, my torque will be tau1, so its formula will become m1 r1 square and alpha is constant, therefore we can write directly alpha. For second mass, tau2 is equal to m2 r2 square alpha. For third body, tau3 is equal to m3 r3 square alpha. For nth particle, tau n is equal to mn rn square alpha. 
So let us add all the towns. Tau is equal to tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus delta dash up to tau n. Now let us keep common term outside of the bracket. What is common friends? Alpha is common term inside bracket. What will remain? M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square plus delta dash Mn Rn square. Now what is sum of product of mass of individual particle and square of the perpendicular distance between x so rotation and the time? Moment of inertia. So I can write this whole term as moment of inertia I. Therefore, my formula becomes tau is equal to I alpha. And this was the proof here. You can see. Simply, your tau is equal to force into perpendicular distance. Force is equal to mass into acceleration. A is equal to R alpha. Put in the other equation M R square alpha. This what your general formula. Now, for first particle, tau 1 is equal to m1 r1 square alpha, tau 2 is equal to m2 r2 square alpha, tau 3 is equal to m3 r2 square alpha. Let us add all the tau. Tau is equal to tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus delta dash equal to tau m. What is common alpha? Keep it outside. Inside bracket, m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus delta dash up to m n r n square. What is sum of product of mass and square of the distance? Moment of inertia i. So, tau is equal to i multiplied by alpha. So tau is equal to alpha. This is what you have to prove. That is a necessary required proof for your board exam also.